Shots of burn. Shots of burn. Black. 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 Show on the track. Take a shot, take a shot, take a shot. Shots of burn. You can take it straight up on the rock. Shots of burn. On this platform, it goes down. Shots of burn. They know it ain't no cap on shots of burn. I'll take a shot. What's up, SOB family? I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. If you aren't already, make sure you follow following Shots of Brown on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Especially Instagram, because that's where I'm doing all the lives and everything got right now for the time being. So make sure you tap in over there and show some love. But needless to say, today I came back with an episode. I wanted to talk about my cousin, Bobby Christina Brown. And everything surrounding um, her passing and, you know, Nick Gordon and Max Lomez and, you know, just the people that was around her and, you know, the things that was transpiring in her last days. And I wanted to, you know, bring it back some, you know, in Chrissy's younger days, too. We just going to talk about Chrissy on this episode and um, get to the, you know, Talk about some things, get to the bottom of some things. I finally just watched this Max, I mean, I apologize, this Nick Gordon um, interview with Dr. Phil. To be honest with you, in the, in the midst of all, when all this was happening, I wasn't even really paying attention to Nick or, or, or you know, I wasn't paying attention to the media period watching interviews. Of course, I seen bits and pieces of the... Uh, Dr. Phil interview when Nick was on there and he was going crazy and all the all the bullshit that he was on during that interview. Um, it's still rest in peace to him. The young man is deceased, and um, but we still gonna talk about it. Um, he was still full of shit. Um, needless to say, but we gonna chop it up. So back when um, supposedly Nick was saying. You know that he uh, he met Chrissy. If I can remember, he was saying he met Chrissy when he was sixteen, and he ended up moving in to the house with Auntie Whitney and Chrissy when he was eighteen. That's what his mother, him and his mother, were saying on that Doctor Phil episode. Okay, so I'm gonna break this down right here. Nick and Chrissy was four years apart in age. So when Nick was 16, that means Chrissy was 12. When Nick was 18, that means Chrissy was 14. Um, that there just don't sit well with me. Why is a 16-year-old damn near man even cool with a 12-year-old girl? Um, why is an 18 year old boy, an 18 year old man, young man, even associating himself with a 14 year old girl? That there is often weird to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know how that took place, why that took place. I don't know how they crossed paths, how they met. I don't know the backstory on Chrissy and Nick. But what I can tell you is, when Uncle Bobby and Auntie Whitney was married and they was living in a mansion and, and, you know, the family was the family and we was all together one day. You know, I've never met Nick, never seen Nick. Everyone that uh, was associated with Chrissy then was her age. Um, little girls her age. You know what I'm saying? Um, I used to take Chrissy to the mall her, uh, along with other cousins of hers. You know what I'm saying? And it would always be her and her little girlfriends. She would have her little girlfriends come over to the house during the week. On the weekends, they would spend the, spend the nights. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was always people of Chrissy's age. It was never no one, uh, know what I'm saying, uh, of that age. And especially not no, no, no boys, no damn, I mean, Nah, we wasn't having that as the Brown family where she was about to be having no grown ass boys coming over the house and 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 chilling nah. So um 
So I don't know. Um, I don't know how that took place, how they met, uh, you know, how that even took place. And I'm not saying nothing. I'm not saying that Auntie Whitney was, uh, I don't know, was wrong with, in her doings. Maybe she just thought that they was just friends and they met in the area and it was nothing more than that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm, that's what I'm guessing. Um, but as I was watching that interview, I'm just, I'm just watching it. And I'm like, I, I wrote down some notes right here of a few, just a few things that I seen on there. Um, as I'm watching the show, I'm just looking at it and I'm like, yo, this is real, real bad acting. You know what I'm saying? This is real bad acting. I'm seeing straight through it. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was like he would be in and out. Like, like this bad, this, this real fake. You know what I'm saying? Um, real fake, along with the mother, too. You could tell that the mother was real fake. You know, she's fake crying. You ain't seen not one tear drop down neither one of their faces. You know what I'm saying? And he going on a rant and rave about not being able to see Chrissy and, oh, I want to see Chrissy and I hate Bobby Brown this and blase, blase, bloom. The truth to the matter is that, um, you know, Chrissy was beat to death. You know what I'm saying? Chrissy was missing a tooth. Chrissy had marks on her body. Um, so, of course, you're not going to be able to see Chrissy. I mean, you, you, you're the one who was with Chrissy. You're her man taking care of Chrissy, and you had no answers for the family uh, of, of nothing that took place. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, why, did, why would you think that the family would allow you to even be in, in the presence of us or Chrissy again? Know what I'm saying? And um, like he's a he's a I mean he's a fool for that. God rest his soul. He's a he's a he was he was a fool for even having those thoughts of thinking that we was gonna be uh, willing to even let him do something like that. Know what I'm saying? And that was Uncle B's call, and of course the family stood behind that. And if it was ever came to a time where it was him or anybody else came to that came on some rah rah, it was gonna be an issue. Know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, I did an episode on here with Landon and Landon talked on here and said how he snuck in there. He was able to sneak in there one day when he was gone with the Houstons or me, Mimi or somebody. I, I, I can't remember. I would have to go back and check that out. But um, yeah, so I don't know why he would even think that that would even be something that would be would go down. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and as far as his mother talking and all that. I mean, as you, you as a mother, if you had a daughter and that was done to your daughter, you damn sure wouldn't want that type of individual in the hospital with your daughter. And when he has no explanation of what took place with your daughter, but he's the last one that was with your daughter. Come on, man. Make it make sense, lady. Know what I'm saying? Um, I also seen that he was saying that Max, you know, he was saying that what happened was, you know, he had went out that night with a few friends um, Chrissy called and heard some females in the background and was saying that he needed to come back to the house. What was he doing? Blah, blah, blah. He goes back to the house. They have minor argument. They go upstairs, lay down and chill. And he said he ended up going downstairs playing the video game. Chrissy was upstairs doing her own thing. And somehow they let the cable man in. Nick went upstairs. The cable man had to access the bathroom. I've never known a cable man to have to access a bathroom. Know what I'm saying? Um, unless he has to use the bathroom, but why would he be using Chrissy's personal bathroom? But needless to say, whatever, Nick, I mean, Max goes in there and he finds Chrissy in the tub like that and he screams and calls for Nick. Nick comes and does CPR on, on Chrissy. So he says, um, I don't know. So in the process of all this, Nick, and Max and, you know, these people are all deceased now. And it's crazy that now they're, everyone that's involved in this situation is deceased. Um, anybody who could have had anything to say is deceased. But it's crazy. So when, when what took place between them uh, is the, is the did, did Chrissy knock her own tooth out and do all this to herself? See, it never made sense. And that's why you was he was never able to come around. And, 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 and it makes you think, too, like what was wrong with the state? Because they had the evidence in their face. 
What was wrong? Was the state in cahoots with all this? I mean, is there higher people being paid? Was they in cahoots with all this? Because the evidence is in your face and you clearly see when you go and see this body that she was, that she had bruises and was beat and was missing a tooth. Know what I'm saying? Uh, along with some other things. So why was there never no charges pressed for the wrongdoing? I have no clue. It never made any sense to me. It really never did make, make any sense to me at all. Um, was the state uh, was the state involved in cahoots with the higher ups and they whoop de whoop? I don't. I have no clue. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll never understand that in a million years. But um, Nick said that he he gave Chrissy CPR, as he also stated that he gave Auntie Whitney uh, Whitney Houston CPR when she passed, which that ended up being a lie as well because the Houstons came out and said that Nick saying that he gave uh, Auntie Whitney, Whitney Houston CPR was a complete total lie. So he lied about that. So what, what would make you even think, okay, if you lied about that, what else can you lie about? You know what I'm saying? Um, truth is that Chrissy was beat and I don't know what to, you know, beat and drug up them stairs, drug up some stairs face down with, by her hair. I don't know what took place when she made it up them stairs, but it's obvious. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was some wrongdoing and some people trying to cover some things up. Um, as I was looking into some other things, I'm seeing that Chrissy's friend by the name of Alex Reed. She was also saying, you know, there was reports of. Chrissy was calling her crying. Chrissy used to be hiding in Auntie Whitney's closet. She was calling her with reports of saying that, you know, Nick was slamming her, punching her, choking her. And they would have little arguments about simple little things that you have in a relationship. And he would just automatically become abusive and beat on her. Know what I'm saying? So that goes to, that goes to show. So if Chrissy's friend, Chrissy's friends and the people around her knew about the abuse that was coming from Nick, the Houstons and the rest of them knew about the abuse that was coming from Nick as well. Because I am a Brown. I wasn't around Chrissy every day when all this was taking place. But I knew about the abuse and I found out about the abuse through her father, Uncle Bobby. You know what I'm saying? I talked about this in the previous video where he was in town and we was riding and he was trying to get, go see Chrissy and he was on the phone with Chrissy and uh, trying to go see her, and Nick was in the background telling him, oh, you better not come through here. We got guns, blase, blase, bloop, de bloop. Know what I'm saying? And uh, we like, oh, pull up over there. But needless to say, we never pulled up over there. We never got to the bottom of that. Um, I wish we did, because if we would have, maybe if we was able to get over there too, Chrissy, things would have been different. Know what I'm saying? <clears throat> we never know. But, um, that's how I found out about the abuse through Uncle Bobby. So I'm for sure certain, I'm pretty sure that the Houstons and, 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 and they people around Chrissy then, they knew about the abuse that was taking place with Chrissy and Nick. Know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure that this wasn't, this wasn't nothing to hide. Um, you know, my cousin Mimi was around. Uh, only Brown that was around Chrissy at this time was my cousin Mimi. And um, her and Chrissy was like this at that time. So I'm pretty sure she probably knew about the abuse and all that what that was going on with Nick, with Nick and Chrissy. Um, why nothing was ever done about it, I don't know. Uh, why nothing was done about it on the Houston side. I did hear that um, Gary Michael ended up getting into a fight with Nick and uh, with Nick's ass at a family function. Blah, say blah. I heard that, but still... Um, that wasn't that wasn't enough you know what i'm saying but i can say you know it has to be on the woman to want to leave that man alone at the same time you know what i'm saying so maybe chrissy didn't have her breaking point with nick to where she wanted to leave him alone and things just transpired and she didn't of course she didn't expect all this to happen to her because she's thinking that she's around people who really genuinely loved and cared for which unfortunately they had no love, but didn't care for her at all. Know what I'm saying? 
Um, I also was saying that Nick was, when, when, when Chrissy was in the hospital, Nick had gave Chrissy's engagement ring to his mother. Now that raises a red flag right there. You know what I'm saying? Chrissy's in the hospital. Why would you give the engagement ring to your, to your mother? Why would you take Chrissy's engagement ring off her finger and put it on your mother's finger? The only thing that I could say that I can rationalize and say, okay, well, maybe he took the ring off of Chrissy's finger and gave it to his mother because he didn't want one of the Houstons or one or, or Uncle Bobby to end up with Auntie Whitney's ring. That wasn't his ring. That wasn't your ring to give to your mother. Uncle B bought that ring for Auntie Whitney. So if it, I mean, so it was just, it, it was just a red flag. You know what I'm saying? Why would you be giving your mother Chrissy's ring? Let's say Chrissy didn't have the ring on. You still don't give your mother the ring. You put it back on Chrissy's finger. You know what I'm saying? Or you hold it was just something that, that that was crazy to me. Um, but you know, even Alex Reed, you know, back to that, you know, she knew about the abuse and even, you know, the people that was around Chrissy, all her friends, Max and all that. See, when all this took place too with Chrissy um, passing, I remember the Max Lomez character. He was, um, he was, uh, as soon as it happened, he went and he lawyered up and was trying to file immunity. It was like all of them were scared because they knew it was some wrongdoing. You know what I'm saying? I remember it was, it was immunity talk. If y'all if he was, if y'all talk and tell us the truth for Max, that he would, you know, he wouldn't be charged with nothing. You know, all these people went and lawyered up and 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 and, and try to try to cover themselves immediately and save face. Um, even looking back into Max's history, I was just watching something. And I remember Max being online back then with Chrissy and um, with Chrissy and Nick and all that. I remember just seeing, you know, the, the little things that he was on. I guess he thought he was like a gangster or something even back then online. Because I remember he used to be talking crazy and people used to say that he was the one that was around Chrissy that had the guns and he was just on some whole wild shit. Um, this is a crazy situation, um, real crazy situation. I don't know how Chrissy got affiliated with these people. It, it, I just don't understand how Chrissy got affiliated with these people. Um, you know, when, uh, Uncle B and Auntie Whitney got the divorce and Auntie Whitney and Chrissy, and, um, ended up moving out the house and they moved out to the West Coast and um, we had a funeral not too long after that. My cousin Jared had passed away, which was Uncle T's son. And and this, this wasn't much long after that. This was probably, hell, six months, eight months or some, somewhere around in that arena. But I had seen Chrissy again, like right after that, right at the funeral, at my cousin's funeral. And when I seen Chrissy then, Chrissy was Damn, thought she was grown in, smoking cigarettes, whoop de whoop. And I'm telling Chrissy, they're like, girl, what the hell is you doing smoking cigarettes? Because Chrissy was always, Chrissy was young. And I'm always, I'm, you know, to me, I, girl, you always been little Chrissy. I mean, what the hell wrong with you? I'm telling her, like, girl, would you? She's like, oh, well, I smoke cigarettes. My mother let me smoke whoop de whoop. I'm like, girl, put that damn cigarette up. But um, we had a, we had a crazy little funny um cousin moment there and had a little conversation um, but it was, you know, it was just, so I see that she took a turn quick. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just wish that she didn't get involved with these type of people that she got involved with. But, um, it's just crazy though, how I'm now going back, man. And I'm going, I'm going back and I'm looking at these things. And it's just bringing all these, um, it's just bringing, it's just refreshing in me with all this. Cause it, it's like, I mean, sitting back and, and, and for real, it's like, I done been through so much. I was just having this conversation with Tyreek the other day. It was like, I've been through so much in my life that I done forgot. I done, I done, I done been through so much. I done forgot a lot of shit. 
because I've been through so much. It, like, for real, there's been so much that took place back to back to back that I done, um, forgot a whole lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? But um, needless to say, though, I, 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 I want to say this. Um, you know, um, Chrissy was one of the most loving, beautiful, had the biggest hearts, funny, like she would walk in a room and light up a whole room, you know what I'm saying? And she was just a, you know, she would always, whenever I think of Chrissy, she would always be, I would I always think about baby Chrissy, like that little innocent, like my cousin ain't deserve what what was what was what was given to her, man. Um she ain't deserve what was given to her, man. My cousin would would literally give anyone the shirt off her back. And she loved everyone who crossed paths with her. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just thinking about my cousin's last moments, man. And I just know that she was just scared. And in, I mean just scared and, and, and felt lonely. And was like, damn, why? Why is this happening to me with the people that I'm taking care of that I love unconditionally and would give my last to? This is how y'all do me in my and I mean this is how y'all do me? It's just unfortunate, man, how 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 uh how this shit ended. How the how just how life is, man, you know. It's just it's just crazy how shit is. But um, Chrissy, you know, big cousins, hey, I'm going to hold you down. I'm going to keep your name, your legacy alive in, the, in, the, in a good way. I'm going to let people know who you who you truly was, man. And I'm going to keep these these memories alive. That's what Shots of Brown was for. That's what Shots of Brown was all about. And um, to let it be known, you know, maybe, and I'm not, you know, a lot of people put around, you know, Chrissy's drug use. Maybe Chrissy did, you know, have a have a have a drug problem. We come from that. We come from drug addiction, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? Like we we we've been around that our whole life, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? I can think I've been around it my whole life. I can't even think of a, of a time that I never encountered drugs on both sides of my family. You know what I'm saying? That's what we come from. And that's unfortunately sometimes, you know, we slip through the cracks and get caught up in some things that we shouldn't get caught up in, but we human. And Chrissy's life was put out to the forefront to the world. And she was hurting, suffering. She was hurting from a little girl about that. Know what I'm saying? About her parents' drug use being plastered all on TV. And, you know, she's a kid. People talk about things like that. And everybody knew who Chrissy was. Know what I'm saying? But um, and I'm not I'm not running from Chrissy having a drug addiction or, or, or none of that. Or, or Chrissy going through some things. But at the end of the day, my cousin ain't deserved nothing that was that was uh, handed down to him. Know what I'm saying? Her or my aunt, Auntie Whitney. Know what I'm saying? Or or Little B. Or 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 your family. If this happened to yours, know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. No one should have to have to pass this way over money, greed, and just and just pure hate. Know what I'm saying? It's a uh, it's, 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 it's just crazy to me, man. It's just something that um, truly, you know, we'll never get over. You just got to keep it going every day. You know what I'm saying? Um, she would have been 30. I mean, right now she would have probably would have, I mean, had kids, been married, living a life good. That was all stripped and taken away from her. But, um... I love you, Chrissy. We love you. The whole Shots of Brown community loves you. The whole world loves you. And I'm going to just keep spreading these good, positive memories about you, baby girl. Thank you all for tuning in. Till next time, I'm going to see you all. Much love. Shots of Brown, baby.